please just run us through, uh, for, for people who haven't been following the story, uh, what Tawanda uh, claims uh, happened to him exactly? Look, uh, the long and short of the story is that uh, it is the state security department uh, together with the police that we strongly believe connived and uh, Tawanda Mcheiwa was uh, abducted during broad daylight in town in Blueweo and uh, he disappeared. Uh, we only managed to get him back after we made an application at the High Court for an habeas corpus. That is when the police had to uh, bring him back and uh, he then appeared at the magistrate court after 72 hours as the High Court judge had directed. And have, uh, these are state officials now, these are police, uh, have any of them admitted um, to torturing him? Uh, look, uh, I think the High Court order, if one follows it closely, it's conclusive. The, the, the police were directed by the High Court to produce Tawanda Mchewa in 72 hours, and they complied. So that's an admission on its own that they taken him away. Uh, whatever admission that we expect they might say will never come. We know it yeah. since time immemorial. And how badly hurt was he? What was his condition? Oh, did, did you see him as soon as he was released? Um, look, I, I used to watch some of these things on, on movies. I never thought I'll have a first-hand uh, witness of this kind of barbaric attack. It was, it, it's unbelievable that uh, any human being can be attacked in the manner in which he was done in the 21st century. It's shocking, actually. Yeah. Uh and what did he say police were telling him? Because uh, we are hearing similar claims uh, from other parts of Zimbabwe. We know that several people were arrested. So I understand this, this was a young man. Uh, he, he was uh, thinking of taking part in the demonstrations on the 31st of July. Is that correct? Uh, which would mean he's an activist opposed to the government. Uh, but that was uh, by no means any sort of crime. Uh, w were police uh, trying to warn him not to get involved? Uh, is that the motive for, for the torture? Uh, there, there are quite a lot of uh, narratives that uh, they, they brought into before. One of those is that uh, they were looking for his uncle, one in Tutu Zimatutu, and then there is an issue about him participating in politics at an age of 22, and they said, look, by the time you get to 30, you are going to be a problematic uh, person. So there, there, there are quite a lot of uh, narratives that they brought into fall. But for whatever reason, there, there, there is no reason why uh, this kind of uh, treatment should be uh, any Zimbabwean subjected to. It's, it's archaic. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And we've been reporting that he doesn't feel safe right now. Is that the case? Um, Sorry, I didn't get you correctly. We are reporting that he doesn't feel safe uh, from his abductors. Uh, they, they said they could come back. Is, is that true? Very true. Actually, look, uh, I, I think he has been in hiding for some time now. I, on, I also have uh, problems getting in touch with him because each and every time you phone him, he's at a different location. So... He is a man who is traumatized. He is a man who is uh, not safe in Zimbabwe. Not that any one of us is safe, but uh, I am saying he is the one who has, uh, has been subjected to this kind of uh, treatment. The, the yeah. young man is traumatized. Uh, and no one, uh, especially at his age, sh should have to hide. Has a, has a case been opened with police? Um, you say he's not safe in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, do you not believe there, there will be any justice uh, if, if this is investigated? Are, are human rights um, uh, officials looking into this? What's happening? Well, it, it's going to be one of the most interesting uh, cases that we can ever witness. Look, we have a situation where from our position that the police were involved. So now, uh, constitutionally, the police are mandated to investigate crime. But if they participated in crime, then we have got a problem. How do you then expect the police to investigate themselves and prosecute themselves in the, in the same vein? So it's, it's, uh, it's something that is uh, rather going to be problematic. Not only that, 
we have uh, uh, Nick Mangwana, or the Honorable Nick Mangwana, who came out on SABC uh, making certain allegations uh, that uh, the family is lying about the abductions and there have been narratives that uh, all these things that you, have been taking place were from the previous administration. You know, so if there's this, this kind of denial, then we... We, we, are, we are fooling ourselves. Uh, one would then wonder, where are we going? And wherever are we going to get justice? So Ad it's a cause for concern, really. Yeah, Advocate, my final question to you. So um, you say that your client has implicated uh, state officials, police officers here. Uh, but we know that there's also been a claim against the MDC Alliance, the opposition uh, party, and we will be speaking to them. So I'd just like you to comment on, on their statement released. The MDC Alliance says it's investigating the very serious claim that Ms. Tendai uh, Mosocha, uh, the Bulawayo Women's Assembly Chair, um, was involved somehow in the abduction and subsequent torture of Tawanda Muchehiwa. Um, there are reports that, that she um, took the, these officers to where he was. I'd just like you to comment on that, please. Look, uh, yeah, there is an interesting uh, issue there. I don't know how such investigations will progress, but let me just give you the summary of it. You'll be the judge. Uh, first and foremost, Tawanda Mcheiwa was uh, picked up, let me be clear, was abducted. Uh, the other person who was there is uh, uh, Madame Masocha, right? And uh, Madame Masocha, together with other two nephews, due to these nephews, were taken to the police station. I got there at the police station. She had been released, right? And the two nephews were held for... Uh, a better part of the day uh, at the police station, and one of them was subsequently um, uh, detained. But if one looks at the, how all these things unfolded, there are offensive materials that were found in the vehicle, so the police say. But the person who was in uh, possession of those, I'm, I'm talking about possession in the legal sense because it was in physical control at that material time, was Masocha. She was uh, then... Uh, released. We don't know why she was released, but I'm not saying that she could have been, you know, she could have been prosecuted for them. Well, it depends on how the, process, the, the, the police uh, are viewing their evidence, but it's something that is going to unravel in court because the, uh, one of the nephew's trial date is going to be set very soon. So those are the issues that we will be, shall be dealing with because if ever Advent Matutu committed an offense because he was outside the car, few meters further from the car, the person who was inside the car is Masocha. Why Masocha is not uh, being uh, prosecuted for that offensive material? Well, you will be the judge. Like I've said, this is, this is what transpired. I don't mean she participated in the, in the, in the abduction, but uh, I, I am saying, look, there's that gray area that needs to be okay. uh, looked into no uh, problem. closely. So, so this is a member of the opposition and we will be speaking to the MDC Alliance later that says it's investigating uh, the claim against its own members. Thank you for explaining uh, where things are with your client. Uh, that was advocate Mbani Sitole. We take, uh